So as the third and final step for the analysis of content of an image, we need to do what is called a discourse analysis. What is this and what is involved in a discourse analysis? You can read dozens of books on what discourse analysis is. But what it essentially boils down to is analysing and understanding the types of power relationships that are implicit in the ways we see. By this I mean how our social and cultural context conditions how it is we see and the types of meanings and understandings we take away when we look at an image such as this. Perhaps? Yeah, you're right, Emma. I think when we look at power in this image, we have to ask ourselves, how does this image represent, depict the tsunami as a political crisis, as a humanitarian crisis? And an important question here is, what do we see and what do we not see? What's in the picture? What is out of the picture? And what is the power to frame the crisis in this particular way? What does that mean in terms of the political content, the consequences, the emotional consequences? That's the kind of power relationships we have to ask ourselves when we analyze that image. Okay, so if, for instance, we had to take these insights back and look onto the image that we have in front of us here, um, what would we be looking for in terms of precisely that kind of discourse analysis. So if we go back to our image here of the tsunami, then we would essentially ask questions like, who and what do we see in this image? Who and what do we not see in the image? Who, as Roland said, who is left out of the image? Who, and we, this is we as audiences, is looking and what position are we looking from? And what are the implications of the camera, the camera angle that's, type of, that's shot here? So in sum, when we're doing a discourse analysis, we're looking for the types of power relationships that are implicit in the image and how it is that we see the image.